let's just talk a little bit about subcranic hemorrhage. So you think of the uterus and the amniotic sac. The amniotic sac is actually composed of two membranes, the chorion and the amnion. And then you think of the placenta, if it, the, the uterus is like a balloon. You have two layers inside the wall, wall of the balloon is the uterine wall. Then inside you have two layers, the chorion and the amnion, and the placenta is somewhere in that top part of the balloon. You can get a subchronic hemorrhage, hemorrhage under the chorion, which is one of the layers of, of the amnion and the chorion that kind of keep the amniotic fluid in this gestational sac together. It's called a subchronic hemorrhage if it's less than 20 weeks, uh, and we see them a lot. Now, when is, does it become a concern? And I have some stats here. Uh, and also I wanna say subchronic hemorrhage, especially in before 20 weeks, the patient may or may not ever have any vaginal bleeding. A lot of times if they're small, they'll resorb on their own and the patient doesn't even know and only knows because they had an ultrasound and nothing ever happens. That's most cases. Um, and that means it's asymptomatic and it just goes away on its own. Um, okay, so in early pregnancy, so a subcranic hemorrhage is considered small if it's less than 20% of the size of the gestational sac. It's medium if it's 20 to 50% and large if it's 50, greater than 50 to 66% of the gestational sac. Um, and then there's something where you estimate the volume and all that, but that doesn't really, I mean, that's imprecise. Um, we just kind of categor categorize them by large, medium, uh, sorry, small, medium, or large. The larger they are, the more likely they are to ca cause future issues and potentially cause a chronic ab abruption after 20 weeks and cause preterm labor and cause P-prom and cause vaginal bleeding. So the larger subcarionic hemorrhages that don't go away are li more likely to be the ones that go on to progress past 20 weeks and then become the chronic abruption. When you hear about abruption though, placental abruption, um, more, more likely it's referred to in a case where there's an onset of sudden, a sudden vaginal bleeding, the placenta is starting to tear, it becomes an acute situation, and sometimes it can lead to uh, loss of pregnancy or preterm delivery because you're bleeding, abrupting. And that's what happened to me with my twins. It was 31 weeks and the placenta was tearing away. Um, mm -hmm. But the chronic abruption can happen in the situation I just described earlier. And I have a lot of those patients. Uh, some had some chorionic hemorrhages diagnosed earlier and some didn't. For whatever reason, a tear occurs behind the placenta and it bleeds a little bit at a time. And it might bleed and then stop, bleed and then stop. Sometimes we can see evidence of it on ultrasound, sometimes we can't. Then sometimes they end up breaking their bag of water, then they end up getting delivered. So that's kind of the natural history of a chronic abruption. Um, but a lot of times the fetus can survive, you know, stay in, in, in utero, meaning inside the uterus for a long period of time, depending on how much bleeding they're, they're having. But every person's different, every pregnancy is different. Mm -hmm. The biggest risk factor for abruption is a previous abruption in a prior pregnancy. We don't really know why that is, but it can happen again. Um, so I hope that answers your question. I know it's a lot of information there, but just keep in mind that subchorionic hemorrhage and abruption are kind of two different things. And one does not necessarily lead to the other other than a larger subchorionic hemorrhage can lead to an abruption that we do know. Does that make sense at all, Dr. Cross? <laughs> yeah, uh, no, I think yeah. that was extremely thorough. Yeah. And it, yeah. it's a great topic because I see it all the time um, when patients go in for, yeah. I don't know, like status posts, like MVA, like a, um, a motor vehicle accident mm -hmm. or something like that. And they end up with a radiology ultrasound and almost mm -hmm. all of them, they write it on there and then mm -hmm. the patients freak out freak and they out. come to my office like, freak my out, placenta's yeah. bleeding and, you know, and most of them go away. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, the subchronic hemorrhage, I really don't even worry about it until it's really, really big. And sometimes the patient's having spotting too, then you know especially at less than 20 weeks or even in the first trimester that there might, there's definitely an increased risk of that leading to miscarriage. But again, that's in the minority um, of patients. Um, okay. That's